So you last played here in 2015, but I saw you last year backstage. You arrived on your push bike. You must love the place. Uh, yeah, that's right. I did a question and answer thing last year, I think. And my son's band played here. Ah, uh, so that's yeah. why you came. Yeah, that's why I came, yeah. Yeah, Nick at Six. But, um, yeah, yeah, I love this festival, it's great. So you played the first ever Monsters of Rock, which was kind of basically the start of all rock festivals in a way, back in the day. And that actually rainbow headlined with Graham Bonnet. Um, who played earlier? Oh. Why, why, what do you think? And that complete, in a way, completely changed your career. What do you think the importance of a festival is for a band? Well, it, it's um, it's important because you get to play in front of a lot of different fans. They're not all your fans. They're like different, but especially if you're first starting, it's good to um, you know it's good to steal other people's fans. That's what it's all about, and it's still the same today. You know we. Um, we went on and just went for it. I mean, it, we were quite, um, we were quite, quite big when we went on. Though we sold a hundred thousand records and we went on stage. Um, so um, we were the underdogs. I don't think any of the other bands had ever heard of us. Maybe Judas Priest had. But um, yeah, it was great. It was great. It um, it was uh, one of the first shows of of the eighties, the big festivals of the eighties, really. Indeed, and uh, it's still going today in, in, a, in a different form. But um, so, how any survival tips for someone coming to a festival? Survival tips: yeah. uh, <clears throat> stay dry, stay warm, and um, drink lots. Yeah, fair enough. And if yeah. there's anyone on the lineup over the whole weekend, um, if you can think about some of the bands that are playing, are there? Is there anyone that you would like to actually be in their band as well, if you could? Be in their band? Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to be the guitarist in ZZ Top. <laughs> That'd be great. So, a hat it's a sound, it's a sound bloody awful, but I reckon I could do it. <laughs> that would be quite fun. Put I'd like to on, see you that. Know, false beard. <laughs> I know a few Billy Gibbons licks anyway. Oh, there yeah, you go. Yeah. There You're you kind go, of in yeah. the band already then. Come on. <laughs> bring it on. Yeah. Um, so what are you going to bring um, to your headlining slot tonight? We're doing the, uh, we're doing the um, track listing of the um, our first live album, 1981, I think. Eagle has landed. So, um, yeah, I'm surprised there's not, there's not all our big songs are on that album. It's really weird. So we're going to be playing the hits off that album, but we're not going to be playing some of the other big songs, which is a bit strange for us. But, um, yeah, it's going to be good. And yes. this is the first time we've headlined a festival in England since Reading in 1986. Woo, how, does that, then, how does that feel? That feels then? really good. Yeah. yeah. So have, have you decided to do something special then because you know you're headlining? Is that why you decided to play tracks um, off that album? Well, the boss asked us to do something special. Ah, okay. So we decided to do that. We don't really, um, we don't do this, uh, you know, all of Wheels of Steel or all of Strong Arm of the Law or all of Denim and Leather. But uh, I think doing the, the live album uh, listing is pretty cool. I don't think that's been done before. I like the sound of it. Um, so, you know, if you think back to when you first started, you were part of probably one of the most important periods in British heavy metal. Did you feel like at the time that you were onto something special? No. <laughs> no, I don't think that you feel that. Uh, you know, we knew something was happening, uh, but we didn't know um, what was happening. You know, we, yeah. we knew something was happening, but we didn't know what was happening. and. Uh, you know, it wasn't until uh, some of the big magazines, you know, newspaper like Sounds and and people like that, Enemy and Melody Maker, started writing about uh, Saxon and Maiden and uh, some of the other bands that were around, <clears throat> that we really started to uh, understand that something was happening, really. You know. And they even gave it. You got your own name as well, didn't got you? Got our own name, yeah. New Wave of British Heavy Metal or New Wom, what do they call it? Yeah. Wobbum. Wobbum. Yeah. It's like a funny name, isn't it? ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life, but there you go. Yeah. I know. Um, and, and, and part of your catalogue is quite melodic as well. So do you, do you feel like you had a connection with that whole AOR scene that was happening in the 80s? Uh, not really, no. I mean, I'm the melodic one. The other guys are the, the sort of, um, you know, guitar boys and riff things. Um, you know, I like, I like it. The thing is, it's a fine balance because if you've got too melodic, you sort of, uh, like, you know, you, you sort of wimp out a bit. And if you got too heavy, you're 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 into sort of you know other bands' territory like Metallica and things. So it, you have to stay sort of somewhere in between because because we were, 
you know, because we, we were so, so started in the 80s, and the songs are heavy, but they're quite melodic. Uh, the early albums were a mixture of, of, of heavy metal and sort of, uh, you know, rock. So we try and stay the same now yeah. as we were in the 80s, because I think we veered away a little bit in the late 80s and turned a little bit more melodic. But I blame the guitarist for not writing the riffs. Yeah, there you go. There you go, exactly. You're going to get me later. So you mentioned Metallica. How does it feel when bands like that cite, cite you as an influence on them? I think, I think it's good. I think yeah. it's great when, uh, you know, bands like Metallica and Pantera and all those other bands, Megadeth, they all say that Saxon influenced them. I think it's cool, you know. I think it's cool to... Uh, I, I, you know, it was, it was us and all the other bands from the ages that influenced them. Yeah. You know, we meet bands all the time, especially in America that grew up in the 80s, you know, and they're, they're highly influenced by the whole movement there, you know. Exactly. And um, what, are you, what are you currently listening to at the moment? Um, my son's band, really. Nothing much. Yeah, uh, nothing much. Uh, I'm listening to... Uh, I'm going to listen to one of these albums later. Yeah, so what... So Thin Lizzy. Yeah, you, are you, like big, thin, thin are you Lizzy. big fan of Thin I Lizzy? I like Thin Lizzy. I, kn I knew um, Thin Lizzy quite yeah. well. Hung out with those guys. I did. I used to hang out at Stringfellas with Phil Lynott. Oh, so dearie there you me. Go, you see. Enough said. Enough said. What did you do at Stringfellas? Why did you want to meet there, I wonder? Well, back in the day, it wasn't a pole dancing club. It was like a, it was like a dinner. A, you know, used to go for dinner after the shows there. Yeah. And then there was a, a disco downstairs. That's how it was there. Oh, so it was it. pretty good. You know, we used to go and pick up birds, as they said back then. <laughs> Incredible stuff. So when we take it back, like to what forty or forty years ago, is it about forty years ago when you first started? Not when I was at Stringfellas. No, no not when no. you were at Stringfellas. No, Definitely 79, not. Seventy uh, nine, Saxon yeah. started. I started obviously before that. Yeah. But seventy nine is the Saxon date, and um, yeah. So when you toured with Motorhead, what was that like? Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, we became friends and uh, stayed friends for you know forever, really. First impression of Lemmy. Um, Stunning sense of humour, Lemmy. Me and Lemmy got on really well because we, we had the same sort of, uh, we had the same sort of wit. Yes. Very dry and slicing. <laughs> You're not dry, are you? No, come Never. Be. <laughs> I not like since it. Lemmy died, no. Yeah. I bet you, you miss him. I do miss him. Yeah. yeah, I do miss Lemmy. We used to chat a bit on, uh, on texting and things. Yeah, I do miss him. Yeah. Yeah, sure. What's your secret obsession? A secret of what? Obsession. Um, I don't think I've really got one. I do tend to collect guitars when I'm in America. Only when you're in America, why? Yeah, because they're cheap. <laughs> and there's more of them. You know. Is there? But, yeah, I quite like some of the rare, rare, you know, not like really rare that sort of like Billy Gibbons plays, but um, hmm. sort of like odd makes, you know, that okay. you find in junk shops and things. So you're not I interested? I found two when I was there last time. Great. What, what did you find? Oh, you wouldn't know. I might do. Oh, like Silver Tone? Yeah, I know that one. Yeah, for like $80. <laughs> That's good. That's not bad. So mm. what interests you in a guitar? Is it obviously the way it sounds? The guitar? Yeah, like as in um, if you're looking, if you're, you're guitar hunting. Yeah, well, I, like, I like to hear the way they sound, yeah, but I also like them because they're sort of, um, you know, built in an era, in a, a, you know, that's not around anymore. Mm. I mean, pretty soon there's going to be no rosewood finger, fingerboards or maple necks because it's all going to be... Um, you know, put on the yeah. on the rail list. So mm. people should buy these um, weird guitars while they can. Well, listen, I'm going to let you go. Get ready for the show tonight. Mm. Thank you for I'm chatting ready. to this us. Is, I'm ready. This is me. You're you're just going to rock on yeah, up. Well, you I'm look good. Walking on like this. I like it. It's yeah. a good look. So why not? Mm. Excellent. Thank yeah, you. All have a great time. Drink lots of beer. Fantastic. <laughs>